Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to take a look at factorials. Factorial notation looks like this, where you have some number, I've called it n, and an exclamation mark. And that represents a certain operation. It means that you take that number and you multiply by all of the whole numbers less than it until you get to one. Let me show you. If we had four factorial, that means four times the next lowest number, whole number is three, then times two, and then times one. So four times three times two is 24. So we would say four factorial is 24. If we looked at five factorial, it would start with five, and then we'd multiply by the next lowest number, which is four, then three, then two, then one. When we multiply all of this out, 20 times three is 60 times two is 120. 10 factorial will be 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one and that's equal to three million six hundred and twenty eight thousand eight hundred as you can see the numbers get very large very quickly with factorials your calculator will have a factorial button it looks just like that with an exclamation mark it might be an x and then an exclamation mark and so you put your number in press that function and you will get these values you may be asked to do certain operations with factorials so let's take a look. If you're adding or subtracting factorials, there really isn't any shortcuts you can use. You're just gonna to have to calculate each of these factorials and then do the addition or subtraction. Two factorial is two times one. Four factorial is four times three times two times one. So two plus 24 equals 26. If you're asked to multiply factorials, for example, two factorial times four factorial, again, there are not any shortcuts you can use. You have to calculate each of those, each of those factorials and then multiply. So two factorial we already know is two. Four factorial we've calculated it is 24. If you're asked to do a division with factorials, there are shortcuts. Let's take a look at this example. 10 factorial means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I'm actually not going to calculate that. I'm going to leave it in that form. 8 factorial will be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And what you will notice is that this is exactly the same as this. So I could have thought of this question as 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one is actually eight factorial. The denominator is eight factorial. So this cancels, or in other words, eight factorial cancels. So we can take a little bit of a shortcut if we understand the relationship between a factorial of a higher number compared to a factorial of a lower number. If we were to finish this question, the answer is 90. So we can save ourselves some time multiplying everything out, even using that factorial function, because if your numbers get really, really large, your calculator might not be able to handle it. So it's good to know that we can simplify these without having to find the whole factorials in the numerator and the denominator. Let's look at some more examples. In our next example, we have 12 factorial divided by 11 factorial. 12 factorial will be 12 times 11 times 10 and so on. 11 down, that product will be 11 factorial. The denominator is 11 factorial. We can cancel that and our answer is just 12. So if you recognize 
that this factorial will be this number times the factorial of the next lowest number. That's gonna allow you to do that simplification. Let's take a look at some more. In this example, we have 100 factorial divided by 97 factorial. So I'm going to multiply 100 times its next, the next lowest number until I get to 97. So that's gonna be 100 times 99 times 98 times, and then 97 down, we can write as 97 factorial. We're gonna leave this as 97 factorial. And then we can cancel 97 factorial out of the numerator and the denominator. And then we can just multiply 100 times 99 times 98 to get 970,200. You might see questions where you have a product of factorials in either the numerator or the denominator. And my advice when you see something like that is take the largest factorial and break it down into its factors until you get the factorial of the highest number of the product. So in this case, it's five. So I'm gonna take eight, I'm gonna break it down times seven, times six, times five and down is five factorial. I'm gonna leave five factorial in the denominator as a factor because it will be able to cancel that. Four is four times three times two times one, and I'll, I'll drop the one. It's not gonna change our value. Now right away I can cancel the five factorial factor in the numerator and the denominator. And then we can do some other canceling before we calculate this. Eight, we have a factor of four in eight and a factor of four here. So four into there once, four into there twice. Three, I have a factor of three in the denominator and I have a factor of three in this factor in the number six. So three goes into six two times. And a factor of two, divide by two, divide by two. Nothing else to cancel or reduce. So I just find the product of one times seven times two, which is 14, and my denominator is one. So understanding this relationship allows you to find your result much easier than expanding all of these factorials. So we know that 10 factorial will be 10 times nine and so on. We can also write 10 factorial as 10 times, this can be thought of as nine factorial. So 10 factorial will be 10 times nine factorial. And that's going to work for whatever number is here. 15 factorial will be 15 times 14 factorial and so on. So if we were to generalize for any value for our number, which I'm gonna call N, it will be equal to n times n minus 1 factorial. And that could be also written as n factorial is equal to n. Now n minus 1 factorial will be n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on. So n minus 2 factorial. So if this number, for example, is 10, 10 factorial is 10 times 10 minus 1, 9 factorial. This means that 10 factorial could be written as 10 times n minus 1, 10 minus 1 is 9, times 10 minus 2, which is 8 factorial, and so on. You might be asked to simplify algebraic expressions involving factorials. So let's take a look at how we do those. So if you were asked to simplify this, we're going to use what we just talked about. We take the highest factorial, which is n plus one. That's gonna be n plus one is larger than n. So we are going to break this down until we get this factorial. So we're gonna start with the number n plus one times the next lowest number n plus 1, if we go 1 lower, we subtract a 1. n plus 1 minus 1 is just n. So that would be n factorial. 
we have n factorial in the denominator, so the n factorial will cancel, and this will simply be n plus 1. If we had n plus 2 factorial divided by n factorial, this is the larger number, so I'm going to start with it, and I'm going to break it down until I get to this factorial. So that will be n plus 2 times the next lowest number, so we subtract a 1, n plus 2 minus 1 will be n plus 1. Then we go to the next lowest number, we subtract a 1, and that will just be an n. That's what we have in our denominator, so we'll stop there. So our numerator is n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n factorial. Our denominator is just n factorial. We can cancel the n factorial, and our result will be n plus 2 times n plus 1. Let's say that the largest factorial is in the denominator this time. This is the one we're going to break down. So we're going to leave our numerator as n factorial. This factorial can be written as n plus 2 times the next lowest. We subtract a 1. It would be n plus 1. Then we subtract a 1 from this, which would be just n factorial. We stop once we get the same factorial as we have in the numerator. That will cancel. So our result will be 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1. In our next example, we have n factorial in the numerator, n minus 2 factorial in the denominator. This is the smaller value of the two, so we're going to break down our numerator. It's the larger value, so that's going to be n times 1 less, it's n minus 1. 1 less than that is n minus 2. That's the same there, so we'll stop there over n minus 2 factorial. Cancel that, and our result is n times n minus 1. Our last example, so it looks a little different because we have a coefficient there. So the numerator is 2n plus 2 factorial, the denominator is 2n factorial. This is larger number than this, because it's two more. So what we're going to do is break this factorial down into the factors until we get this factorial. So we start off with 2n plus 2 times 1 less than that will be 2n. Subtract a 1, it will be plus 1. Subtract a 1 from this will be 2n. That's the same as what we have in the denominator, so we'll write it as a factorial and stop. The denominator is 2n factorial. We can cancel that, and our result will be 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. One other thing I forgot to mention was 0 factorial. But for now, accept that it's equal to 1. It's not going to fit into the definition we've been using, but it is defined as 1. Factorials are used for um, counting principles and probability combinations and permutations and I'm going to be doing videos on all of those following this one. Yeah.